Brightside Home Theater Podcast, a home theater podcast that's all about the experiences, the sights, the sounds. Lost him. Oh, <laughs> what the happened? <laughs> John is I, joining us I, from Australia. Uh, Are you in delay? Doubt. <laughs> You're I, here. Can you hear us? Oh, I can. I said the sounds. Did you? It did not come through. It, yeah, delayed. It, yeah, delayed. Like, what was that? A good seven seconds. <laughs> yes, so why do I have a delay? We didn't have a delay before the show started. No, that's no, no, fine. And and it seems okay now. Oh, man. oh okay. I think. La- la- yeah. we had various sort of you know flickering lights. This week we've yeah. got phantom delays, John. I think you yeah. you know this is not some sort of conjuring esque other side. I, I paused for dramatic it, effect. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, with technology, it. Makes everything very dramatic because we're all like, right. uh oh. <laughs> we're like, oh no, here we go. I mean, I can go out and come uh, back in if it's not better. No, it's all good. It's okay now. I think. No, I think it's good. Me, yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're good. As long as you can keep up with the conversation, we're fine. We'll wait for you to catch up <laughs> when there's a delay. All right. Oh, uh, seven, seven second well, I'm delay. In the future, you have to catch up to me. Hey, I, I, I think of all of us. I'm the one that's really in the future. Yeah. I say, does that mean I can curse and you can just have the button ready? I'm that's what I was going to say. Delay. I, I don't know how you're doing your math, John, but if you're behind us, that's not the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh. so, so we, so really, we should be able to curse, and John should be beeping us. Uh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so oh, how's everybody's oh. week been? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, you guys delayed for me. Yeah, in fact, actually, uh, Deej, you've got um, uh, you've got uh, good. Paul Hurt just saying. There we go. Out. Okay, that's uh, what I was waiting to hear. Party. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, let me see what I can do. All right, yeah. let me. Well, it's while weird. Doing, while you're doing that, Deej, um, now, uh, guys, you, you can hear me. I'm feeling crook. I've got a cough and a cold and everything else. Um, so, I'm gonna bravely, manfully struggle on, um, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hard like that. Go on without me, Sarge. You know all that, um, but um, but just want to take a minute just to say uh, get well soon to Jordan Carpenter. Jordan's obviously normally in the chat. He's not in tonight. Um, he's had a hospital procedure today, oh, and wow. he is re- re- convalescing at home. Um, and uh, so yeah, I just want to send him a quick shout out and say get well soon. Nothing major, but yeah, he's got to take it steady tonight. So okay. uh, cool. yeah, just say yeah, so, uh, get, get well, soon. Jordan. Yeah. Wish you yeah. wish you well. How's that? How's that, Paul? Uh, I adjusted a couple of things. Um, like literally, I have no. I mean, J- Steve, John noticed it right away, but I, my mm-hmm. settings aren't any different than they were yesterday when Steve and I recorded. And uh, I, I mean, I haven't touched anything. I just sat back down. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe it's a cleaner pipeline. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. So I mean, John, if I've got to, then that's fine. I mean, it's a bit weird, but you know, I'll do it if I have to. <laughs> oh, let's now Steve muffled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's not uh, let's not go there. Oh, um. All right, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the too loud on DJ. Still, what the heck? What do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? Except not I'm yell sorry. at people. I mean, you can't. If you like, can take sixty. Yeah, I can do that. But then it's like. All right, how's that sound now? Is that better? That seems How, better. Did, can you hear me? Does that sound? So, I'm. I just literally six dB down on my uh, ro- roadcast. A, yeah. a little bit more than normal, but you did okay. sound more normal. Yeah, yeah. So I went from fifty six dB to fifty dB, and I've been always at fifty six. And there was a time when I was too soft, and I was at fifty four. So I hmm. bumped it up too. So it's like, I think it has to do with your it, like. I don't know. It's weird. Well, we That's didn't weird. all suddenly get better internet connections. <laughs> no, I know, but it's it, what's it'll be funny when I see now, like on my end, I can audibly like my levels here are really low, but they're coming through to you guys louder. So I'm wondering what's what it's going to look like when I get the track. 
right. yeah. remember. So I'm like, that. It's that's interesting. But hey, welcome to technology, guys. So, ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I can't even. I mean, I have. Yeah. Oh well. Um. All right. Let's get to some home theater stuff. Um. Wow. What a week for us. Um. We mm-hmm. jumped uh, substantially. Um. In uh, for for the first time in a while, let me pull this up here. Uh, our, our YouTube page, we're at we're actually at nine fifty three now. I took this picture this afternoon, nice. so uh, yeah. So we went and we were in the third. We were hovering in the thirties for quite a while. So the past week has been really good. Um, a lot of responses, a lot of fun. So thanks there. And if uh, you're listening and you haven't hit subscribe, uh, really appreciate that to hit subscribe. Um, cause when we get to a thousand, I'm scheduling the 24 hour podcast. So we're only 47 away. Yeah. So just put out speaker videos every day and you'll see the number go up and up and up. Uh, yeah. The speaker videos. What was that? Uh, I mean, it was your own show today. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, talking to youth man. Yeah. Is that what he said? Yeah. You're saying that I don't, I, yeah, I've, done a lot since then i listened to a little bit of that i listened to it obviously when i talked to him but then i listened to it again and uh i mean the response has been i've been blown away by the response from the listeners but also like him personally and him like being so supportive and stuff and he's like hey what let me do what are the links and blah, blah blah and he's just been great so uh it really is um uh uh what was it uh, who was it? PK over in India said something this morning and he's like, he made a joke on Twitter about us being both self-proclaimed introverts. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, but we are, you know? And it's like, it's, you know, anything other than home theater, you know, it's like, if you take me to a, anyway, you take me to a crowded room or something. I'm just like, do, 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 do. but you know, talk home theater. Like I'm, we were, it's not a joke. It's like, pull the pin. Right. And it's like, let us go. And we're just, you know, and not just me and, and youth man, it's all of us. We're, it, that's why takeover Tuesdays work so well. Right, Steve? <laughs> oh, yes. 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 It's, a, it's a, it's a strange quirk of relativity. Two hours goes by in two minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not quite working out how that goes, but it really does. As we discovered last night and yeah. the listeners will discover in a couple of weeks time. Um, are we, are we training time. indeed or is it going to just be a surprise on the day? No, we can tease it. We can talk about it. Yeah. So. Okay. So last night we uh, we spent a couple of hours, uh, DJ and I, recording a uh, Takeover Tuesday with Carl Ellsworth, yeah, the, uh, the writer of Disturbia and Last House on the Left and and um, the remake, uh, Red Eye and uh, Unhinged. Unhinged. Yeah, and that's what we talked about that fun. too. Yeah, he mm. did, and some some very fun behind the scenes stuff as well that uh, that neither of us were expecting, and for a more mature audience. Just uh, one line. There is an F bomb yeah. in there, but it's I mean, to be fair, I'm gonna allow F bombs from Russell Crowe. Okay. Yeah, well, so just exactly, beware yes. for that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's not Carl's fault. It was Russell Crowe's fault. Right. You, you gotta quote the man, right? Yes. <laughs> like, so um yeah, but so, yeah, he's, he he's such a good guy. Oh my god. Yeah, it was amazing. It was so much fun. And like, I mean, you'll hear the interview in two it wasn't even an interview. Actually it was. He interviewed us. <laughs> so funny, <laughs> but that'll be in two weeks because next week is the listener experiences so i'll answer you know questions and comments that i've gotten but uh i was thinking of pushing that and i'm like no that's not fair let's just keep it going and plus it gives me some time but yeah it, it was really really cool so yeah. um i got another takeover tuesday coming up from a listener with the uh gramani speakers in his house so I was talking, I, he, I met him on YouTube. He was one of the comments this week. And I was like, Hey, you should, you'd be perfect for a takeover Tuesday. And he's like, I think he was like, what's that? And I was like, well, hold my beer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, subscribe <laughs> so, and I'll tell you. <laughs> yep. So he's got that Grimani system and uh, we're going to talk about that, have him on eventually and stuff. So uh, we're growing boys. Uh, we're having fun and it's, you know, it, it's, oh man, uh, Patreon, I'm doing a lot more over there. Thank you to everybody over there as a thank you to everybody over there. And, uh, that's me. Oh, there you go. Hey, Greg, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I 
Kinda. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you in virtual person. I can say that. Um, and then maybe turn the other guys up and then what? What other guys? So now you guys are too low? I don't know, are we? Oh, turn you guys <laughs> up. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, no, I, I, we're not going to keep messing with this stuff. We'll be here all night. It's like, yeah, so how was the go. show? Well, we tweaked our, our soundboard. <laughs> Got it working um, at, uh, five minutes to the end of the show. Uh, right. Um, but yeah, Patreon, I started putting out more and more videos uh, talking to him because it's super easy. I found a way to do that. So, And I hosted our first uh, Zoom call last night uh, and that was a lot of fun we had um, WV Brew and uh, John Mensor was in there which is the same person <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but I'm trying to bump the numbers <laughs> no so we had uh, John was in there John yeah. Brock was in there and uh, Mike Wright uh, Aberguy I think is I think that's how he says it his little code name so we all chatted for like an hour or so a little over an hour and um, we're going to be doing those a couple times a month uh, and, uh, chatted everything had, you know, just chatted home theater and it was, it was great. It was great. Uh, so, you know, if you didn't get that, if you're a Patreon member and you didn't see any of that stuff, uh, just go on Patreon and, you know, put your alerts on because I'm doing stuff pretty much every day now over there, just quick messages and stuff, but it's a little something for the, for people supporting the show. So it's uh, patreon.com slash bright side home theater. Look at that, John. I did no. it all by myself. He, no, no, he's, he's a I'm big so boy, proud. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. He's all so, grown up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Brock Star. You guys missed that. Brock Star. He's like, it was a lot of fun. You guys missed out. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. So, I uh, appreciate it was, it was that, John. Here. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so, all right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Let me see anything else we should get going before we get to our, uh, experiences so we can get Steve to Betty by with yeah, his sickness. Know. That should be. No, I think we're all good. Yeah. I think we're okay. It's, um, yeah, let's do this. Cause there's some great stuff to talk about. Oh, and one yeah. that I'm going to bring the bright side down a bit before I bump it up again. Oh, oh no. Okay. Oh, dokie. Here we go. Wonder if you. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> he's right in the middle of something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so he's bringing it down. Quick, cut him off. Yeah. Cancel it. <laughs> All right. So, um, I was. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think I'm getting what Steve has. No. Um, computer virus. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's bad enough. Our audio levels are all messed up. Um, let's see. Uh, do you want? We'll just go in the order that I sent this morning. Yeah. You want to do that? So, uh, oh, now I got to figure out which one was, uh, it, there it is. I'll just do it, chuck it on. We can, we can do it. Ooh. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, Steve, see, you're up. Talk, talk to me. The, uh, it's in theaters, I think still, but I, I saw this on a, on a screener. Um, now this is the movie that I was kicking myself about that I didn't ask Carl about yesterday evening because I'm sure he would have seen it. Um, because as we were talking, and listeners will find out in a couple of weeks, Carl has seen all the recent horror movies that I've seen. And John, he is our kind of guy. Yeah. He loves awesome. all the stuff that we love. And he's really, you know, really enthusiastic about it. So this is Talk to Me. This is an A24 release, um, an Australian horror film. And I don't think I've seen an Aussie horror film since, well, either Wolf Creek or I suppose The Babadook, um, either either. Um, and so this was quite a surprise. Um, it's a movie about some teenagers who come into possession of a, a hand, and you can see it in the top of the, the picture there. Um, and if you hold that and say, talk to me, you um, can see things and see spirits and other things, and then um, chaos ensues. Um, and naturally, it all goes wrong. Um, it was absolutely riveting now i know that, that a member of the chat who mm. i won't mention john thompson um <laughs> says he fell he fell asleep he yeah. nearly fell asleep <laughs> at, the, at the theaters um which i can't get because i i mean it, this was riveting for me um it looked and sounded great even on the screener by the way it's out in 4k blu-ray in, in late uh, next month in october um and i will be buying this day one because i thought this was excellent 
Um, and boy, oh boy, is there a moment halfway through that I'm not going to spoil that will just comes out of nowhere that will will make your jaw drop and then you will wince um, and then be looking through your fingers probably for the rest of the movie. <laughs> because it just something comes out of nowhere that makes you go, oh my God. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I thought it was great. I really, really enjoyed it. It's only short, it's an hour and a half long. It's not one of those, you know, two hour epics um, and really, really good. So I recommend this one. Did you, there's no Evil Dead Rising. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good on Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's more to come, Stephen. Um, but um, I, I've started by October viewing early. Um, but yeah, no, this is really, really good. Really, really fun and uh, and well worth it. But do not watch it with anyone that's got a weak stomach. Because as I said, the, the bit that I'm very directly referring to will make some people, I think, ill. So it's wow. uh, it's very very good. I had a great time with it. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what does that say about you, Steve. <laughs> oh, I mean, everyone knows I messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like the whole, but how was the home theater part? Well, the, the like, it was a screen of each. So, so oh, okay. One wallet, but having said what? that, the the image quality was really really nice. It's, okay. it's it's got you know the, even on the screener which is only 1080p but you've got you know the black levels look really good it's very detailed it's been shot digitally there's no artificial grain in this um and even with the the two channel stereo that, that had on the screener you could they, obviously i was watching it my receiver out mixes it anyway um and so you you know you're hearing kind of voices moving and so though this is a day one 4k buy for me i've absolutely picked this up all day long um and you know, don't listen to what John Thompson says. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can because you might agree with him. Yeah. You're you're one man, well, Steve. One man. I, and I and I like to spread myself as as thinly as I can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, so is it subjective or objective, Deej? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. It is very subjective. Um, <laughs> it was objectively great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yes, right, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. Paul, if, if you're into this kind of movie, mate, see it. So Paul says was interested. Now, very interested. You know, pre-order if, if it's. I, I think it's gone from the cinemas here now. So pre-order the 4K disc, Paul. I think you'll be very, very pleased with it if you like this kind of movie. So it's really, really good. Cool. Yeah. All so, right. All right. Oh, tell you what All righty. Really yeah. like that. Down and then, all right, uh, let's see what's up next. Ooh, I'm up next. So, this is the first, uh, something new this week. I'm gonna try doing this. Hopefully, I can do it more often, uh, hopefully, every week. But, uh, yeah, so this is uh, DJ's uh, scenes of the week. And the first one I'm going to start with, I have two this week. Um, this is the scene from uh, that was in the uh, Trinov room, A Quiet Place. But what I'm doing is I'll give you the timestamp from the actual movie instead of like saying, hey, here it is. It's like a four minute scene. So this is A Quiet Place at uh, 45 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, it's the scene it, that begins right when she, quote unquote, steps on the nail. If you haven't seen the movie, that's not really a spoiler, but that's the part. If you have seen the movie, you know what we're talking about. So she steps on the nail. But then this is one of those demo scenes that has been around for a while. But uh, I wanted to see this for a couple of reasons. Uh, so in the Trinov room, I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was because of the size of the screen or what, but it was very, very grainy. And that was, and I talked about it. I think I talked about it with Travis and Todd a little bit um, when we were there. But I was like, I was a little bit shocked by that because it is a dark scene. And to when you're sitting there and you're you're looking at this, you know, all the other scenes were beautiful, but now in this one, it was just very grainy. So I don't, I actually thought sitting there that I'm like, maybe they have the 1080p version or something because it just didn't look as what I remembered it. So I wanted to see that. So I saw that. And of course at home, it looked, it looked better. And I say, of course, because my screen's much, much smaller. It's a 110 inch screen. And then I put my masking up, you know, so it's, when you shrink stuff down, any grain like that, maybe that it, it very well could have been that, but I didn't see that in any other scene or anything like that, it, it, whether it's in that room 
or running the exact same projector in Mad VR, not the exact same one, but same models in the uh, in the um, uh, Storm Audio room, the Grimani room. So that one is what got me to watch that a few times this week. But then watching it this week, oh my God, the sound and how it just, it moves. And we all know the scene when she's looking up and you can hear, you know, the little tick, 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 that the creatures make and that's overhead. And so it's a great scene for your overheads for that. But what I wanted to talk about was there's a part when it's right kind of at the beginning of this scene and she, you know, she goes over to the, the shelf, Emily Blunt, and she leans on the shelf for support because she's going through a contraction and she's like, mm, she's trying to hold it. And, but the, the creature is moving and you can, but you can't see it. It's off camera, but it's to the right side of your room, midway down your room, but it's a bass thump. It's the footstep and then it's followed by some higher pitch noises. So, you know, so and there's actually one point and I watched this so many times that I think they shook the camera on part. I don't know because I felt it and it moved like she moved like the screen seemed to move on me a little bit. And I was like, but it was, a it, it you know, in unison with that bass thump. But anyway, so the bass starts on the right midway down your room and then the next step is the front right, like right in the corner of the room, which is where my speaker is. It's right into the corner. It's towed in a little bit because that's where I am. And the, the way the scene pans up, plays out, the next step, it doesn't go all the way to the left. It's like center left, right? So it's a center left, correct? <laughs> right there. <clears throat> and it's, but pay attention to the scene because it's not just the like it's not like you get boom boom boom. It's like a a really low bass, like almost inaudible. But you can you think you can feel it over there, but you can't. It's it's just it's the higher pitches that you hear, and then it goes around and it it does finish out on the left side a little bit further away. And the whole time she's just sitting there as this creature moves around her, and. I, it, it it was a lot of fun and that I think that one misses like a lot of the attention because of the great overhead one that comes shortly after that. But that, that right there, the entire scene is fantastic, but just started at like, like I said, what a 45, 40, uh, it, it's a great scene. So my next scene, John, you'll like this, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Right. Okay. And this one comes up at one hour, five minutes, and 48 seconds. And this one was also in the Trinov room, but I wanted to experience this multiple times in my own room. So, and I backed it up. So if you know this scene, this is the, you know, doom, doom, ch doom, ch when they, they learned to do that. So in the Trinov room at Cedia, what they did is they started it a little bit before that, and they gave you like them up on the bandstand and they're like, the, you know, the little group, if you know the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, see it. Uh, <laughs> it's like, so there's a group of people and they're learning how to do that beat, right? Doom, doom, ch Well, if you back it up a little bit more, you'll, I backed it up. This, this starting point is right when he um, tells them all to get up onto the bandstand, okay? What I wanted to do is if you use this as a demo, it's, I think it's a fantastic demo because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're setting yourself up and, and your, your listeners, if they come into your room, your listeners for what is going to just be an explosion of detailed bass. And so what you're hearing in your room is the band and, or the group just doing stomping the foot and clapping, stomping the foot and clapping. And then all of a sudden it just jumps right to Madison square garden. And when it does, you get the full drum set and you can hear it. You feel a little bit of it like you would at a concert. You feel a little bit of that bass drum, the, the, but then, but you can hear and, and hear every note of the drum set, like all the different drums, you hear all the feet, you hear the clapping and it just fills your room. It feels like you're in Madison square garden. And then if, if you want, jump back, start again, go back to when they're just in that little, you know, in the, in the, uh, 
uh, studio and they're just clapping and stomping and then jump back to Madison Square Garden. And it's just your room, just it, the detail of of bass is is amazing because it, you're getting the entire like all the different drums and the higher bass notes and the lower bass notes. And then, of course, you got, you know, Freddie Mercury, who what, who played him. Uh, uh, Rami Malek. Yeah, Rami, which is awesome, but that, it's just a fun scene. And then from there, you think it hasn't finished. And John, you know, it's like that part when he goes, it like the song just opens up, right? And now you're getting the bass guitar, you're getting the guitar, you're getting everything. And it's like, now you're just like, oh my God, I'm at a Queen concert. It is, it's an awesome, awesome scene. And that one's at one hour, five minutes and 48 seconds of Bohemian Rhapsody. So that's... And uh, let's see. I, I oh, let's see. Boom. Another yeah. um, another another movie with, with which has got really good sort of on stage music and that kind of thing is A Star Is Born as well. Yeah, which is an Atmos, and that has like that makes you feel like you're on the stage. You get all the reverb all around. You get every, yeah. all of the, the the audience behind you and and then in front of you and that. So yeah, that's another one that's also really really nice as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like, the, I mean these music videos are a blast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to take that down. I meant to actually. Okay. John. Yeah, so John says uh, that's why it won the Oscar for best sound. Yeah. I mean, it did quite well, didn't it? If you think about how troubled the production was, right. it, it actually came out pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was so good. So good. So, check those out for this week. Uh, let me see. I'm like, I'm all messed up on boards here. All right. Uh, what do we got next? We're up to. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're doing. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Here we go. This is all Ooh. of us. Uh, don't know why that didn't switch, but all right. Uh, Ahsoka Disney plus, uh, Steve, why don't you lead us off since this is like your favorite show of all time now? Five, the image shows. Yeah, part four. yeah that's the, that's the show. Yeah. I just say the same one, that's same one as last week. Yeah. yeah that's it. It's, um, such a, such a pedantic, Hey, John, honestly, come on. <laughs> Just in case people are watching and they're wondering. Perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, episode five. So, so um, well, um, I really, really liked it. Really enjoyed it. I'm very glad I've seen Clone Wars. Um, otherwise, yeah. I'm not sure this would have made any sense at all. Um, in fact, I think it would have been a bit weird if you hadn't seen Clone Wars. But having seen that, and we know someone who wrote a couple of episodes, don't we, Dee? Yeah, that <laughs> was shocking. Ask him about. No, so we didn't we get to. A, oh, no, oh. Yeah, Carl Ellsworth wrote so just dropped into out of nothing. He wrote a couple of the Clone Wars episodes, awesome. which we didn't know. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then we just skated on past it and never went back. Um, so <laughs> that's ne that's next time. Well, um, it's not like I mean, it's funny. You're like we skated on past it. Like we're all sitting there, like so. Uh, what do you want to talk about next? Oh yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I I thought this episode was great. Um, and you know, again, I'm. I mean, Disney have been putting out stuff out on X Twitter with with Anakin in it, so I don't think we're spoiling it with that. It's all over social media now. Mm. Um, so he's in it, and it's great to see him again. And again, I still get a a, a kick out of saying snips. Um, yeah. I just think that's yeah. cool. Hearing Hayden Christensen say it is just very cool. Um, and there's some great lightsaber fights, and it's a good story, and, you know, it's great. Um, and it's, I think... You tell me. Well, oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm not going to tell you anything Paul. about rebels, Paul. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. It, just, just so you know, Paul, brace yourself. Vader is Luke's dad. <laughs> anyway, right. So, um, it's you know, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's got to know by now. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so it's great, and I think it kept the quality uh, of the video and the audio. I still reckon it's taken a jump, uh, but that's me. Um, what did you guys think? Well, the thing is, other people have said – I've read other people saying that as well, um, yeah. that they thought those last couple of episodes had a jump in quality. I, I still feel like it's been very – for me, it's been very consistent from episode yeah. one through five. Um, no spoilers. Like I also really enjoyed this episode, yeah. and I thought the AV part of it was great. Um, I did feel it was a bit of fan service, though, and didn't do anything to move the – the season forward <laughs> in any way. Um, really? Yeah. I mean, where did, where did we end differently than where we started? You know, I mean, 
everybody's well, I, in the same place yeah. at the end of the episode as they were at the beginning. I think um, the viewers, though, that maybe didn't see Clone Wars or something were exposed to something that they didn't know about before. So I think maybe it was a little exposition, you know, like for, like on what on going forward. I mean, it's super fun and super yeah. fan service, and it was great to see all of that. Um, but I just kind of feel like with eight episodes and this was number five, we didn't go anywhere um, in this episode. Um, you know, kind of felt like we took a pause and, you know, mm-hmm. spent some time with our friends and then, you know, now we'll move on next week. Mm-hmm. So we, we did have a ride with some space whales though. I mean, come we on. We did, which that was super cool. Um, again, no spoilers. <laughs> um, but yeah, that scene with her and, and the, you know, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Was really cool. <laughs> so. Did you um, did you guys see online the um, uh, There's a bit in the Mandalorian. Is it season three, where they're in hyperspace and there are whales? Mm-hmm. Yeah, whales I've seen it. Yeah, um, yeah. And people are saying this Grogu. is a, some foreshadowing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. it's just I mean, people I, looking I, to tie things together. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. But oh, so cool. What did you think, Deej? Oh, I, I, I loved it. I said, as soon as it ended, I'm like, I felt like that was more of the mid season. Like that felt like more like of what a four should be. But at the same time, Joe and I were saying like, it's actually like kicks off the second half of the season, which I thought was great. Um, I, I felt like I see it's funny, John, you say that. Cause I don't about like, we're kind of in the same place, but we're, we're not. I mean, we we are, but without spoilers, it's like we went somewhere and we're back to the same place. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it exposed everybody. And it, I thought it was super entertaining. I thought it was super fun for the story going forward. Um, and there's so much to discuss, too, but that you can't do with spoilers, but um, without spoilers. But it there is like, where could this all lead to? I think this episode is one of those like, and, and and I get what you're saying of like it's fan service, but it's fan service to us that have seen everything. Not everybody has, you know. So that's I think some of that is the case. But I was I, I was just like, wow. and it was what fifty minutes long. I think this it one was long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, but it didn't, yeah. you know, like like our show didn't seem it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Right. There's nothing wrong with fan service. You know. Oh no no. I mean. Um, there's nothing wrong yes. with it. I just kind of felt no. like this was a lot of it. Um, yeah, but it was all fun. Like it was great to see. Um, and, yeah, uh, Steve- it turns out I'm, I'm pleased. I'm not alone. Stephen at in the chat again. I love how he said that. Right, Stephen at in the chat, uh, live and direct uh, says Ahsoka has more energy than Andor. I agree with that 100. percent Steve. I think the makers of Andor, everybody agrees with that. Nobody's denying yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it, they're two different one, types of like shows. Andor. Right. What's that? Right. But I, you I didn't was like the one Andor, that, yeah. No, because right. I thought it was ponderous and boring. Person, right. Person. I mean, Andor's I just mean, different really? Star It's very different Star Wars. Steve, <laughs> yeah. Steve, objectively, you know, Ahsoka has more energy than Andor. But subjectively, do you like which one do you like? You know what I'm saying, buddy? Yeah. Well, I, I, I ob- objectively, subjectively uh, agree with what you just said. Objectively. Yeah. Um, for, for, for people that don't know, uh, go to patreon.com. Yeah, I wonder what we're talking about. Uh, what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, I put out a video on the difference between subjective and objective. And I didn't swear, right, guys? No. I didn't swear. No, 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 okay, no. that was good. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't even angry. It was just a, that was one of the fun ones. That I put out. It was funny. It was weary. It was weary, not angry. Wasn't it? It's just like, uh, guys. yeah, <laughs> well, it, it was a topic of conversation at Cedia and it has been a topic of conversation for a long time on the, you know, in, in home theater, it's a huge topic of conversation, you know, people and I, and it's, it's a sales pitch. So anyways, <laughs> Come on, take over Tuesday. I'll tell you more. Uh, all right, uh, we done with that. We done with Ahsoka till yeah, very cool. Though. Till like good. a couple hours from now, <laughs> we can watch it again. Yeah, can watch the next one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. all right. Let's. We're up to uh, where is there? It is Steve. All right, you ready for uh, this one? Yep, yep, yep. 
Okay, so with apologies to Stephen at in the chat, who said earlier, Steve, another horror film. Uh, here we are with another <laughs> horror film. <laughs> um, so yeah. this is It Follows on 4K uh, Blu-ray in Dolby Atmos, um, which was a real surprise to me, and I didn't know that until I I got my sweaty mitts on the disc because um, this was quite a low-budget movie, and I I did not think that they would mix this in Atmos. Um, it's Now, this has just come out over here. I think it's a second sight release. I don't know if it's come out there yet. I don't know if it, if it has or it's coming, um, but uh, it, it's very cool to see it. Now, I had the Blu-ray, and I watched the Blu-ray, oh, it's got to be a couple of years or so ago, and I didn't think much of this the first time I saw it. It's a movie about uh, a teenage girl who, um, I'll be careful how I phrase this, she has a, a, a midnight liaison with a, a, another uh, 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 teenager um, in a car, and after their liaison, he says to her, I have given you something, um, not that, <laughs> um, and says that um, you will now be followed by an entity. Something will follow you, and if it touches you, it will kill you. And this chap says, it's not, it's not fast, but it is clever. It's not stupid. And the film then becomes her trying to stay, firstly to work out whether this is real or not, and then to try and stay one step ahead of this yeah. thing, yeah. which takes different forms. Um, and when I first saw it, as I said, I thought it was it was overblown and overhyped. The reviews of this have been stellar. When, they, when it came out in the theatres, you know, the, the critics were raving about it. Um, and so when I came to see it on Blu-ray, as you guys know, I have preferred to see horror movies at home. Um, I didn't get it. I thought it was a bit ponderous and a, a bit silly. Um, all that has changed on a second viewing, and especially in 4K. Um, this version of the movie... Is fantastic. It really is good. The image quality on it is stunning from frame one. And again, I was blown away. I just assumed this would be grainy, low budget, you know, kind of a almost like an also ran 4K release, you know, a, a you know a low budget one. Um, but I, I couldn't have been further from the truth. This was shot digitally, and the 4K just takes it and runs with it. The, the black levels are inky black. The details are fantastic. The, the, the contrast between light and dark with the HDR just breathes new life into this. If you'll forgive the expression on a horror film, but it breathes new life into the, into the, into the movie. And it looks incredible. This Does it rise? Things. Like, like there's no evil dead in this. No, I'm trying to steer clear of that. We're going to have an objective, <laughs> subjective issue again. <laughs> um, again, by the way, we never mentioned that with Carl either. Damn nabbit. Should have asked him that. Anyway, another one I was kicking myself about. <laughs> yeah, but you may, you keep bringing time. it up like we talked about the weather. <laughs> yeah, but well, <laughs> we right. missed so much good stuff. The whole thing was good stuff. We should be keeping a list like Carl was. <laughs> we should be taking notes. I know. <laughs> he just kept yeah, writing let, stuff uh, down. Oh, he's such a writer. Um, let's go so, figure. So, yeah, yeah. So this this looks pristine. And, and it's one of those movies, if you took out the story, and just had the screen change every few minutes, you'd be quite happy because of how good it looks. You know, yeah. you've got the fact that, that that still there is good because you can see the you know the leaves on the quad, you can see the leaves on the trees, and, the, and they're all separate and distinct. It, it's three-dimensional. It really is something special. I was blown away by this. Um, and then the audio is is really nice as well. There's a lot of creepy stuff. There's things going on um, around the room. There's lots of atmospheric stuff. And when this thing catches up with her and it takes different forms as i say you get some real punchy stuff with that as well um i absolutely recommend this um i mean uh, you got carl there saying a stream for october i wouldn't stream this unless it's that's unless it's kaleidoscape because this is too well that's not a stream, stream. <laughs> no well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's it oh god are you being subjective or objective that's objective no objective um, uh, that's, that's not a stream that's a fact that's a fact <laughs> just the facts man um yep. And so this is, and, and I wouldn't stream this on a streaming service. I'd buy the 4K disc, or if it's on Kaleidoscape at 4K HDR, buy it or rent it on that. Because um, it's fantastic. Really, really good. And makes a movie that was forgettable for me first time around, unmissable second time around. And that's that's all because of the delivery system. Who knew? 
It's almost like that so, matters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yep. quite. It, I mean, who can say? <laughs> uh, yeah. so exactly. I, I really like and John, this is one I'd I'd be curious to see what you make of this because okay. it is it's just it's it's off kilter and it's odd. And yeah, the whole I've thing causes an allegory for you know STDs. Um, right. But it's a it's a it's it's well worth well worth seeing and and it's just very off kilter. But boy oh boy does it look and sound good. Um, and again, That's I reckon you can watch this. Not like the story and just thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. Is it is okay. available? Did looking, you look it up? Did you see? I'm looking right out? now. Um, it follows. Uh, I'll look Blu-ray, it up. Ray international delivery. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So Carl, you know, oh, no, Carl, first, I, I get that. So Carl um, says, sure, purchase it if you think you'd rewatch it, but it was one and done for us. You know, that, which is fair enough. Um, if you can rent hmm. it on the, you know, on Glide Escape, then do that. But I, I personally wouldn't stream it because I've seen the kind of the lower version, the 1080p one, and it did very little for me. Um, and John, as always, saving the day for us. John Thompson, yeah. it's all about the presentation. The sights, the yep. sounds, the scenes. Oh, yeah. I don't see yeah, it. Yeah, uh, Glide Escape only has it in HD. Yeah, I don't see it oh, being man, available. Yeah. So, yeah, it's inside release over there, don't they? They release Blu-ray. Blu-ray is available, oh. but not. Yeah, but second sight isn't. Is that that's not the studio, is it? Well, that's the that's the thing. Bear with me a second, guys. Two seconds. Yep. Um, because yeah, if it was done by a, a second, yeah, so second sight you know, films. Yeah, that's the yeah. oh second sight films there for anyone that can see it. That yeah. yeah. So I think it is a it's a. You know, it's a release there, but I mean, okay. if it's not out there yet, then wait. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest buying the Blu-ray. Get the 4K disc when it comes out. It's bound to because it is so good. So I, yeah. you know, I really do recommend it. Um, but the 4K cool. version, not Blu-ray. You, you might, you know, I mean, I, certainly the critics loved it in theaters and loved the Blu-ray. But for me, the 4K is so good that that's the way to see this film. Um, and then if you don't like it, then then fair enough. But I think it, it, it this is how to see it because they've spent yeah. a lot of money, I think, on this to really make it look great. Um, cool. Oh, okay. oh well, there we go. Uh, John, sorry. John Thompson says there, the new master is owned by Second Sight. Do they, yep. John, do you know, do they release in the US under a different label or a different title? Is it, is it, anyone else pick it up? I don't know if, you know, if he knows, but um, yeah, it, it's really, really good. And of course, with October looming, I've jumped the gun, obviously, right. no patience. Um, you started jumping the gun in January. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, that's, that yeah. is true. That is true. You know, I don't <laughs> like, need an excuse to see. I don't think films. we've gotten through a show without you watching a horror yeah. show, <laughs> horror <laughs> movie. Yeah, that, 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 it's that, like that's true. Like, and and like every show, you're like, save this one for October, DJ. How long do you think October is? <laughs> Thirty-one <laughs> days. There's plenty. Yeah. You can do Evil Dead Rise the first <laughs> to the tenth. And then but just did, take a pick after that. It, it's <laughs> funny because like last year we like. Christmas vacation. He tells us he hasn't seen it ever because he doesn't watch Christmas movies until after his birthday, which is in November. So it's like, uh, you've had many birthdays since then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feed but, the gremlins after midnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, oh, and he, you must have been all messed up on that one. Like, well, it's a Christmas movie, but it's a horror. I don't know what to do. <laughs> is that the Ooh, Thanksgiving part? Actually, yeah, that's well, after your birthday. But if the, but if with a gremlin, if you can, if you can't, if you can't feed it after midnight, at what point does it become the next day? So now you can feed them. Yeah. So you know, like when when can you feed a, a mogwai and it not turn into a gremlin then? And God help you if you're time. traveling time zones, you're driving across country or something, you're, you're screwed. <laughs> or you're on an airplane, then you get twilight. Zone. Oh. don't feed them after midnight Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or if it's daylight savings. Yeah. I know. It's uh, okay. So John John says, oh, this is, I mean, this, this, I can't wait for this. Um, so yeah, John says in the chat, they've got the hitcher coming. I've spent there you go. Restoring it. Oh, nice. Such a good film. Well, yeah. Speak, speaking of which is uh, my no way, next horror one. films. Oh my God. What a good time this was too. Um, let's pull this up right away. There we go. Duel. From 1971 by a uh, little-known director at the time, um, uh, Steven Spielberg, something like that. Like, <laughs> holy! Now it's funny that when I saw i i have n- I had no idea this was coming out. I have no idea it was coming to 4K, which it is in November. Uh, and uh, I'm here to tell you, 
get it. Just get it. And if you're a home theater fan, you need to own this. If you're a movie fan, you need to own this. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee you've never seen it look this good um, for a couple of reasons. One, it I didn't I didn't know this, and the reason I had a bootleg copy in the '80s is because it wasn't in the movies. It was a made-for-TV movie, and that's where my my buddy Ron got it from, and he he gave me a copy and. Okay, I had that. It was remade, added, they added some time to it. Um, <clears throat> I got all this information off the fancy IMDb machine. Um, but they added, they wanted to release it as a movie, and they did in the UK or or in Europe, maybe just the UK, but in Europe. And they added some scenes to it. And that's what we have here. And the restoration of this was, is amazing. It's the picture is like, I don't want to say it's vibrant because it's not like, you know, love and thunder vibrant or multiverse of madness vibrant because it's not that kind of movie. It is from 1971. But if you know the movie and you know the Red Valiant, it's, it's, that's bright. It looks great. The truck, uh, spoilers, it's about a truck. Uh, the truck the last time I saw this was years and years ago. Um, I think I've owned the DVD or something. I don't know. I've owned it before, but this, it, like I always just thought the truck was rusty. It was just a gross looking rusty old truck. You see the different colored panels, like the fenders have almost like a pinkish color, like the, the like a pink primer to them. Um, there's, I mean, the, the picture throughout, it's not heavily grainy, which you would expect. Remember, like Steve and I have said multiple times, talk about older movies. You got to let it wash over your bit and get used to it because it's not today's standards. This isn't today's standards, but it didn't have that grain. It didn't have that heavy grain that you get, you not he, or I shouldn't say heavy grain, but heavier grain than you're used to. It looks really, really good. Um the opening scene, which was added, uh, a lot of this was part of the added stuff, um, but it you get a really nice overcast look and feel. And there's even one scene when they're driving down the road and you could see off in the distance like the storm clouds and stuff. And I mean, it's just, it's just very, very clear. I mean, it's a very, you know, I mean, the, the tone of the movie, the tone of the screen is setting everything up for you. And it's in Atmos. And the Atmos track is really good. It's really good. I wouldn't put it up there with like um, like Psycho and DTS X and how that kind of blew me away. But it was appropriately done. Um, at first, the opening scene very front heavy, but then it does move into the room because I at first I was like, oh no, it's just gonna. They said it's Atmos, but it's gonna be like almost like they took an Atmos label and gave it a mono. You know, it's a mono track, but they gave it the Atmos label. Nope, it moves into the room. Um, the like the opening at the opening, you get a lot of radio talk, which takes place at the front of the room. But then there's cars going by. You're driving down the road, and you you hear the road around you. Um, so much stuff going on um they the picture it's like it's it from that opening scene it moves on and it does become more vibrant so like when you first get this disc and you'll be like oh dj what are you talking about it's it's vibrant but it's like the opening is more like 1971 but then as they get down the road quote unquote you'll see what I'm talking about, the the blue sky in the background. And and that's what was kind of cool is because going back, having seen the whole movie and then going back to the beginning, it really gives you that that overcast feel. You're like, oh, that isn't just because they shot it in 71. It's like, that's what they, or that's what he was going for. Um, the bass rumbles of the truck were really, really cool. Depending on your your location, like depending on the camera's location, you know, there's some later in the movie, there's some long shots and you'll hear the truck come up, you know, you'll hear it go by, but then you'll get down close and like you're on the road, like you're, you are the truck, you know, those scenes where you're getting up close tailgating or whatever. And it's like, 
it's raw all around you. But then the shot will go inside the car of uh, what's his name, David Mann. You go into the car of him, and now you can still hear the truck, and he's looking around. I mean, it's the the audio really good, and air horn jump scares. The air horn of the like. Uh, there's another jump scare with a train. I don't want to, you know, if, if people haven't seen this before, um, definitely. I mean, you, yeah, I, I'm saying it, this is one of those guys. Do you agree that it's like, it's like part of history? No. Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, yeah. Have, have you, did you say you haven't seen it, John? I haven't seen it. No. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Well, I think when you, it, you get a kick out of it. Yeah. It's yeah. Well yeah. Worth yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, I, I think that I had the special edition Blu-ray only a few years ago, not that long ago, and I, I rewatched that. Um, I thought the voiceover was a bit strange. How did that sound in, in Atmos? Did you, does that come right? Is that in the overhead speakers or is that front heavy it's, when he's talking about how he's feeling and all that kind of stuff? It's not. It's not all around you. It is loud. It is like. Like, so when he first goes into like the phone booth area and you're like, is that a voice? Or like, I know the scene, but it felt like it was like he was talking. So it was towards the front of the room, but it wasn't super front heavy. It was like came off the screen. So they didn't try to give you, I don't think that, I think obviously, uh, not obviously, I think that if they had put that into the overheads, that would have been too much. Right. Mm. We would have been like, that's not 90. It, that would have been like, okay, they went too far with that. I think yep. they did a good job with that. Um, it, it, it didn't distract you. I thought it was, it, it was appropriate. It was there. Um, you know, there was a version and again, IMD me machine is there was a version where his wife was supposed to go with him, but they, they wanted him to be isolated. So they, they went with the voiceover for the, um, you know to the descriptions, it, um, and no spoilers then, because John, you do need to see it. But there is a there is a bit at the end where there is a sound which is then used in Jaws, um, yes, for one of the sharks. So it 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 comes back in that. Um, yeah, it's worth seeing, John. I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's honestly never heard it's, of it. It's just a chase. It's just one long. Oh, chase. really? Yeah, I've yeah. It's it's it, yeah. It's it's really. Um, I in my one of the movies I'm going to do for next week. We'll talk about it again. Because after talking with uh, a certain gentleman, uh, I can't wait to watch that again. So, and it it relates to this, but the it's there's a scene at the end too. Um, I got some stamps here um, at one hour and twenty five seconds. The birds in the breeze. See what I did there, John? See that? I do see that. Uh, so it's. Th- th- that's the other part of this movie is that's why I stamped this. It's not just the great sound that you do get the, the dynamics of the truck and, but it brings down to all the quiet scenes, right? This is like, there are scenes in this where it's just like, you want to be in an isolated room to watch this movie. Cause that really sets the tension, especially for a jump scare that comes on later on. Um, but he he uh, the the lead character is kind of taking a break, and you can hear like the wind blowing around your room. It's I don't want to say it's the opening to Gravity, but it's really really good. It's a it's a scene that is I think definitely demo worthy. I wouldn't give it boxes of popcorn. Uh, it's not something you would bring people into the room to go listen to this because unless you're listening to this podcast and you're really into this stuff, they'd be like, yeah, so what? Birds are chirping and there's breeze blowing and you'd have to explain to them how it's moving. <laughs> but it, it's like, listen to the breeze all in the birds. It's really, really cool. Great use of the overheads. Um, and it's just a very, like, I, I love those subtle scenes, you know, not just, I mean, we all have the great scenes of air horn, whoa, woke me up. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, but it's the subtle scenes. Uh, but then for the picture, there's a scene at one hour and seven minutes and David Mann, the lead character, main only character really, uh, is standing in the middle of the road and like, he's just like, doesn't know what to do. He's just standing there, but it's just the shot of him, the blue sky. I had to watch it over and over because this was, I was like, did they green screen this? What happened? Oh, look at that. My, uh, that's funny. Okay. So I'll keep on talking, but my laptop just disconnected. That's how I'm doing the pictures. Um, but yeah, the, the, 
the um the it the picture was just so good that it I don't want to say it was fake, but it looked like just too good to be true. It just looked mm. so the vibrancy, the the detail in his face, the the everything about it. It was just the background. You you, you have to when this comes out on 4K, you'll have to see it. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing. I, I was blown away. And again, mm. I've seen this movie a few times. It's it's just always been considered like it's a, just an early movie, but I. Mm, I can't believe what they've done here. I'm really, really kind of blown away by it. So uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a heck of a film. It is really good. And yeah. like I say, John, you'd be able to find it for nothing online somewhere, I'm sure, in terms of streamers. It'll be there somewhere. Well, I'm um, seeing Blu-rays it, on. I, I'm not even seeing a 4K on Amazon for pre-order okay. or anything. Um, if you go to Blu-ray.com, they have it, it. They're just saying it's coming in November. Oh, okay. Um, so... That's where I saw it. I went to Blu-ray.com and I uh, I looked Blu-ray, it up. Blu-ray nine ninety nine, um, but and I'll the four K, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely wait for the four K. Um, the fact that I mean, I like I said, it's like the fact that we got it. Let me see. Did you look it up on Blu-ray.com yet, John? Uh, no, not yet. I was looking at Amazon. Oh. Hold on. Um, um, Blu-ray.com. Yeah. Yeah, I just looked it up the other day. So let me see. Dual. Boom. Uh, 4K. Dual. Yep. November 14th. It's coming. Dolby Atmos. Native 4K. It's a native 4K transfer. 2160p. Uh, Dolby Atmos. True HD. Blah, blah, and all that fun stuff. Must not be up for pre-order yet. Because usually they have them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it says dual 4K pre-order. Notify me. So yeah, it isn't up for pre-order yet. Um, but they well, do have it there. That, it's and in terms of the UK, and I've just checked this on Amazon as well. So John says that uh, Jewel, all the special edition of Jewel, sold out in a few hours. So hopefully there will be uh, there will be more in due course. Um, yeah. Fingers crossed. It is you know it's it's not you know if someone says name a Spielberg film you know Jewel isn't the one of course that immediately springs to mind. But it's a movie that you know he's had a few good ones since then. Say, yeah, yeah. Well, that is true. <laughs> But it's it's a movie that it's like if it's on you'll watch it you know if it's available you'd buy it you know what I mean it's one of those movies it's it it is it's a sign of things to come it's a sign you know you can see the, the roots mm. of greatness you know forming there um, and yeah well worth seeing I don't know he actually has a cameo in it too yeah he's in one of the diners isn't he is he in the no 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 it's an accident he was oh, right. you can see him especially in the 4K um, you can see him in the phone booth. So, okay. you know, it's not a spoiler. There's a phone booth in the movie, but the way they shot it, looking into the, uh, You're for right. you young people out there, they used to have these glass boxes on the side of the road, right? And you had to put a coin in. Coins were these things that we had instead of a full paper dollar. <laughs> so, but you could, yeah, exactly. Uh, come on, kids. It's story time. Um yeah, it's the uh, if you look in the glass at the beginning of that shot when he's first making the call, you see him standing right there, and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh no, and that's honestly, it was an accident, and they didn't mean it. And uh, why would you need coins? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my son in law. Uh, yeah, why would you need coin? Not in your cell, don't try to do that with your iPhone, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fit the quarter in there. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, uh, um, yeah. No, it's uh, but yeah, you could see him right there, and it it probably bugged him knowing him. Like, damn it, what am I doing in the shot? So I was surprised but, they hadn't uh, just removed it. You'd have thought over the years when well, they're doing these kinds of remasters, it would take yeah, thirty seconds. Especially the four K yeah. out nowadays. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I suppose some of it's got. Uh, it's got some charm to it, isn't it? The idea right. that well, there's so many older movies yeah. when they're, yeah. they're shooting into reflective surfaces, you can see them all there. You know, yeah, just kind of about it. Uh oh, it's just we're too late, yeah. guys. Already got one. Off off to Apple Care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do I get a dime out of my lightning connection? All right, uh, let's That's see. A lot of <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, don't give John any ideas. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah, even get the yeah. visual on that one. 
<laughs> oh God, we're in trouble. Oh, all right. Let's see. That was that. And uh, John, you're up next with, um, Am I? yeah. Uh, yep. You're up next with what's one piece. The, where did, yeah. What's that? I don't know where the picture is. Oh, there it is. There we go. I've not heard of this, John. I'm curious. I what? haven't heard any heard of it no. either. Okay. Yeah. So one so piece. Tell is us, a, John. Well, one piece is a long running uh, manga anime series. Um, there's about 140 volumes of the of the manga book, and I don't know how many, like 12, 13 seasons of the anime, maybe more. I don't know. Um, but this is a property that I am actually not at all familiar with. I mean, obviously, I know it exists and I sell it, <laughs> but I've I've never read or seen any of it. Uh, so I went into this fairly blind. Um, it is on Netflix, uh, Dolby vision, Dolby Atmos, uh, all the standard bells and whistles from Netflix. Um, and it looks great. Uh, I mean, it's very cartoony, you know, I mean, it's trying to f- capture the feel of, of an anime. Uh, so it's v- really bright, really vibrant, uh, the colors, the characters, um, you can kind of see from the image there, you like the bright red shirt and, um, She's got the bright red hair and a <laughs> green hair. I thought that was that. Gilligan. No, it's not Gilligan. <laughs> um, um, it's so like so. It looks great. Um, Sorry. No, it's, hey, it's fine. The Dolby Vision uh, really pops. Um, you know, like I said, the Dolby Atmos sounds first again for streaming. It's Netflix, uh, but it's actually really nice. Um, like I said, I didn't know anything about this and. Um, but from what I've heard, it's fairly faithful to the source material. Um, so all that being said, um, I went into the – I've only watched two episodes, and I actually just watched the second episode right before we started. So I would have more than one episode to talk about. Um, I wasn't quite sure where I stood after the first episode. Um, I mean I could see where it was entertaining, but I, I wasn't – it didn't – pull me all the way in. Uh, after the second episode, I'm a little bit more invested. And I'm definitely going to go through um, th- the first season of this. Um, I've already seen that they have plans to take this about 12 seasons, um, but it is also wow. Netflix and Netflix is not known so to, go, season two. Yeah, to <laughs> go that far with things. But knowing the breadth of the source material, like I said, even 12 seasons might not scratch, <laughs> scratch the surface of this. Um, but yeah, like I said, I actually, um, after the episode two, um, I, I am kind of enjoying it. I'm definitely uh, on board. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I didn't know what to expect, and I don't want to be too spoilery for those that haven't seen it. But I guess th- I don't want to say they're superheroes per se, but there are some powers that these people have that I didn't oh, okay. know. Go- I didn't know that going into this. Uh, for instance, the guy there um, with the, you know Gilligan, he's like Mister Fan. <laughs> he's like Mister Fantastic from the Fantastic. Oh, okay. Board. And like I didn't know that. So when that first, when that first <laughs> happened, I was like, okay, we're going here. <laughs> um, but that being said, that uh, those effects make for some nice um, Atmos effects because he'll like kind of wind up for a punch, and his his arm will like stretch yeah. all the way back and you can kind of hear it going from the front to the back to whatever side it is and then when he kind of unleashes the punch you hear it you follow it going you know going forward and uh you know when it hits it's coming right from the center so it's actually pretty cool um but yeah the first time i saw that i was i was a little surprised um and he seemed to have been the only one with any powers and then in the second episode somebody else something else happens and you're like Okay, <laughs> I guess that happened too. So uh, you get the feeling. I I think they're going to encounter a lot more characters through this that have different abilities and things. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like I'm not sure that either one of you will love it. It depends on how into this. Like I like anime and manga, although I don't read and watch a lot of it uh, because there's so much of it, and most of them mm. are so long that. I just don't have the time to to get into these like seven, eight, 10, 12 seasons worth of anime. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I always hear great things. Um, but it is it is that genre, you know, that comic book genre that I like a lot. Um, I, I don't know that I'm going to say jump right out and it, like you, it's a must watch. I guess I'll let you guys know as I get further through it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but but it is fun and it is a really nice home theater like i said for for netflix it is a nice home theater um experience because it, it visually it looks really nice and there are some pretty cool um like atmos and surround effects uh, at least through the first two episodes you know you can see there they're kind of pirates they're on a ship so there's mm. there's lots of sounds of the ocean kind of around you you'll hear like seagulls and things in the background uh, as you're watching it so there's some pretty cool effects um cool but but yeah and if you're in it like i said if you're into this and i know a couple of people on twitter um have said that they have seen it and, and liked it um so um if you're into this you should give it a give it a try anyway and you can cool. purchase the comics at arkham comics yes arkham uh, comics and games yeah. Yeah. Com. Yeah. yeah there you I, go we ship throughout the u.s united states plugs greg <laughs> yeah Craig the awesome ninja says this is the next for me after I finish Psych. So he's nice going through Psych. That's another great one. Um, is it? How does this compare, John? To uh, forget the name of the one that it's it's a pretty popular one. Joe was watching it. I think Greg watched it too. Um, An anime? Yeah. The it, what's like the one of the most popular ones and it, it's actually a live action or or animated nope, it's not it's anime it's animated well, well, the big ones right now are uh, demon slayer my hero no. academia uh naruto uh, are all super popular um, this is a one, little one older piece. but it had the um popular. it was in their native it was in like what Japanese or whatever, and Joe yeah. watched it that way, and then but then they came out with the English version. I don't know, I don't remember what it was, but mm, yeah, I don't yeah, know. He, yeah, yeah, the camera uh, Attack on Titan is another that's I think that's one. the one, that's the yeah. big one, that's yeah. the one. So, um, yeah, Not yeah, I don't one. know because I haven't seen it, I, I haven't really seen it, oh, okay. Of those. Um, but but like I said, from the people that that are really into the story. From what I've heard, it's a pretty good uh, adaptation so far. Yeah. So uh, I don't see a lot of people that are really upset with with what they're doing. So cool. cool. <clears throat> All right, Steve, you ready? Are you ready, Deej? Are, are you, you ready, John? Are the listeners ready for this? Uh, That's what. Are I'm we doing. ready? Here we go. It's this is the one. not another horror. Yeah. It's not a horror. Although, well, unless you're that one character, that would be horrible. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what we're about to talk about. Uh, All okay, right. So this Uh-oh. Is, uh, 1998's The Truman Show. <sighs> is it that old already? Yeah, yeah, 25 years. You know, whatever it is, 25, 26 years, yeah. So, okay, guys, you've both seen it. I'm assuming you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, in the theater. Oh, so, okay, yeah, I think I did as well. Okay, so... um. Okay, so it, it, it's a movie I haven't seen for a long time. I think I had the DVD. I never got the Blu-ray, and now this is the 4K Blu-ray in Dolby Atmos. It's another Paramount release, um, and uh, I had it a couple of weeks ago. Now, I haven't seen it for a long time. I remember, I think, saw it in the cinema. I've certainly seen it a number of times, and always liked it. I thought it was okay. I'd never loved the movie um, of course, it came out at the same time as Ed TV, didn't it? It's another one of those where there were two similar movies at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking it was okay, it was all right, um, and enough to then pick up the 4K disc. Um, so, been a long time since I've seen it. Um, and again, I'm talking about the movie here. And again, this may be subjective, okay? Um, and I'm aware I'm, I'm on the bright side, so bear with me, okay? Uh-oh, yeah, just bear with me. Um, I found this, watching this with 2023 eyes, I found this very, very hard going. Really? Point, I nearly didn't finish it. I had to make myself do it. Um, and I think this movie... There we go. I think I got to buy it. <laughs> Here's a swing for the fences, guys. I think this movie is as culturally out of time as Song for the South is, but not obviously with the racial undertones, but with the with the way in which it treats its characters and the way in which it puts forward its premise and its story. Um, I think this film is horrible. Now, let me back, let, let me explain why. Um, the, okay. <laughs> the way in which the, the, the characters in this treat the main character, Truman, 
who is vulnerable because he doesn't know what's going on. And I, and I appreciate this may be my defense lawyer training here, okay? This might be Invisible Man style, domestic violence type stuff, Deej, okay? And I'll, I'll, so it may be that. But the way they treat him, the way the film presents it is it's a bit of a knockabout comedy. It's all very funny. And, oh, look at this. Isn't Truman silly? And, and look at all these people doing what they're doing. This is an exercise in gaslighting, coercive and controlling behavior. It is horrible. And every single character in this movie, apart from Truman himself, <laughs> who is a victim of this, right. is, is just detestable. And I, and, I, and I couldn't get on board with the comedy because I was so offended and outraged at the, the disgraceful treatment of him. And I could not separate the two. Now, but that was the point of the movie, Steve. That is actually the point of the movie. Oh, yeah. Because sure this came out, like, yeah, this came out like right at the start of like the big hype of of um reality uh, TV, reality TV. Yeah. and it was a it was like pushing reality TV to that next level, and it, it's a reflection. Everything you're saying is a hundred percent true, but the po- uh, to me that was the point of the movie was that, and this is why I hate reality TV. Everything you're saying right now, it's like. You know, like all of these shows, you don't have a reality show of a normal person. You have a reality show of somebody that's way outside the norm so that everybody can sit home and just go, oh, look and make fun. And it's exactly and that's what this show, that's what this movie is about. It's it it, and you're 100 percent right. But that doesn't bother me. That's it's 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 a reflection of society and that is what we do. Look at what reality TV has become. And I asked my wife, go all the way back to uh, who wants to be a millionaire and the success of that. And it's, it's literally it's people don't watch those things. Just like when you watch NASCAR, people like you're waiting for the crash. People are waiting for the person to miss the hundred dollar question. And so they can go, Oh my God, how did you miss that? Or like you see the YouTube videos or the Twitter videos of people missing the wheel of fortune. It's like, we love to watch people and watch them fail or see them outside of their element or make fun of people. And that's what I thought this movie was about. It's just. And and yet the difference between reality TV now and reality TV then is that reality TV. Now they know they're being watched. They know they're on TV so they know what's going on around them. Where they do, TV, but I don't know they know the extent. They know they're going on, but go back to Maury Povich, and it's like, how did you get that guy on the show to find out he's the daddy? And it's like, he's like shocked out of his mind. Like, why did you think you were going on this show? Some of these people don't understand, I, in my opinion. I've seen some of these shows. I'm like, do you really know what you're exposing yourself to? I don't know they do. And we are seriously taking advantage of a lot of people in a situation, not to this extent, but that's the point of this movie. It takes it to that next extreme, right? Yeah. Whereas I, I think the movie is a journey of discovery. We're supposed to be sort of, you're supposed to be rooting for Truman. You want him to, to outgrow this Island, but the, but the, the people that are controlling him and it is coercive and controlling. It's abusive Mm -hmm. behavior. You know, the, the, any in, if this happened in real life, every single person in this movie, apart from Truman, who'd spend the rest of his life in psychiatric care, um, everybody else would go to prison probably for the rest of their lives, um, and, and rightly so. And I think that that that, and, and yet the way it's supposed to be presented is you've got Ed Harris again. I won't. I'm trying not to spoil it too much, but Ed Harris is supposed to be this. I've been watching you since the day you were born. I created you, true. And he's supposed to be an altruistic, godlike figure. He's the most horrendously vile, horrible person of of a, of a collection of them. And I and I think this is supposed to be a comedy, a coming of age thing. And it's there's nothing funny about this. This is outrageous, but looking at it through 2023 20, eyes. And, I, and I, I accept that. But if you couldn't make this movie today, if you made this today, it would be a horror film and, and a really genre. Oh, if, they, if you made it today, they call it reality horror. TV. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, no, like, I don't want to put the people's name up, but people are saying in the chat, like, I hate reality TV. Dance moms yeah. having kids do interviews. It's like, this is going on. It literally, that's, uh, we love 
to put people in a fishbowl. And it's it, and we we think because they signed a disclaimer, it's like seriously, like oh my god, it's like we love to take advantage of stuff like that. And I think, I think everything you're saying is 100 percent true. But I think that is the point of the movie, and it's that. I mean, it's, it, but he breaks out of it, you know. And it's I I, I knew it then. I thought it then. Yeah, I think, and I hate reality. I hate but just well, quite, and me too. Yeah. But, I, but like I said, I think this is trying to say this is a good thing. This these people are are actually not, you know, they're not as horribly abusive as they are, you know. But you know, that's that's yeah. how I viewed it, and I and I really struggled with it, and I couldn't get on board with the story this time because I was so appalled at what I was seeing on screen and the way it was being presented. Um, you know, so so yeah, so that was a problem, and uh, and for me, I'm not sure I'll ever watch this again. Um, but I'll, you know, who knows? Um, I can, if you want, send me the copy. I'll put it next to my Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> hey, now that film, you can put it in. So, so that's the that's my dark side DJ bit for a moment. There you um, go. Now we'll cross back over to the bright side. The good okay. news is, <laughs> it does look and it sounds really good. Um, you know the, the 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 image quality on it. There, I suspect people will be a little bit disappointed at how soft some of it is. It's one eight five, which with some older movies does create some softness occasionally. I found, um, and it is quite grainy, and you can see that from that picture as well. There is definitely grain throughout, but it's well managed, um, and because it's sort of hyper reality. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, all the all the colours are heightened. It seems to be kind of like it's almost like it's set in the fifties. Um, and so you mm. get all these very bright colors, the very green lawns, you get the, the red of the roofs, you get the, the, the red of Laura Linney's sort of dress and, and she's got <laughs> dots on one of her white tops at one point. Um, and all of that really pops, you know, it looks, it looks really good given the confines of the movie. Um, and it's in Dolby Atmos and there are a number of occasions, Carl would be proud where there are storms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you get lightning and you get thunder and you get um the sound of rain and it moves around around the, the you know around the roof and it moves around the overheads. Um and there's one thing again which is supposed to be a joke where um it starts to rain just over his head, only literally just over his head, and he steps out and then the, yeah. the rain follows him and then comes back, and that's all in the overheads. Um so there are some quite fun little little moments for home theater. I said my problem is that they're just the the exploitative nature of the story which i think is of its time um and belongs to should stay there um but that's just me, <laughs> I just love that. me I'm cough. <laughs> of, of its time but it's still going on today <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, but not but I, I still maintain people today know what's going on and if they don't know well they, they knew we, then we, too they right. knew then too it's not like we had these shows back then exactly you know what i mean and this was more of a like don't let this happen well, when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire started, people didn't yeah. know. When Big Brother started, people didn't know. You know, they didn't really realize what, what was going to come of this. But people that go into them now either know, or if they don't know, then they're being exploited and gaslit, yeah. and, and it's yeah. worse than controlling, and that should be taken off air, and the people that are doing it should be prosecuted because it's a serious, serious problem. Um, and, I, and I just didn't like how they tried to make light of it in my view in this film. And it's a Peter Weir movie who's made some fantastic movies. Um, what was the yeah. one that everybody, John, what was the one on uh, Netflix where they, uh, it was the, um, was it Japanese where they killed? It, it was the contest. Squid game. Squid game. Squid game. Yeah. Korean. Squid game. Korean. Yeah. Oh, Korean. Yeah. Squid game. And it's like, it was gory and everything. That's right up your alley. But that's, it's making fun of the idea of a, a game show. But those people were explained. It was basically Truman Show. It's exactly the same thing as Truman Show. Only people got murdered. <laughs> they weren't like, trying to present it as comedy, were they? They weren't trying to present it as a... As no, a it's... An, thing. Yeah, but... I mean, it's serious. Steve, and, the yeah. difference between comedy, horror, and... Uh, comedy, horror, action, and drama, there is none when you define them as entertainment. And that's one of the things I didn't like about Squid Game. I'm like, we find this entertaining. And it's like, I, I don't, like, I, I liked the show. I figured it out in the first five minutes. I was watching it with my son. He goes, no, no, you don't know what's going to happen at the end. And then I said it and he went, 
<laughs> I was like, okay, but it's, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's all the same thing. We, we, it's, I, th I think it's human nature. We thrive on exploitation. We just do. And, and this was actually how it angered you, I think is the point of the piece. It's supposed to make you feel that way. Whereas if you're not, the, if you're the other way and you're like, that's a great comedy, you'd be like, dude, that's not a comedy. This thing's about like yeah. society, like, how like, evil we are yeah. to people. <laughs> well, had it been, like, this is why I said, if you remade this today, it's a horror film. You know, it's a, it's a oh my God, what Could are be. these people yeah. doing? Whereas back then, I think they, they think, and you can tell it from the music, you can tell it from the, the way it's presented, the way it's written, is that it's supposed mm -hmm. to be uplifting and enlightening and a good thing. And he, he discovers himself because his creator okay. allows him to do it. I mean, I, it's just, and again, I appreciate, look, I deal with people that, that, that uh, are victims of coercive and controlling behavior and domestic abuse and, um, and all this stuff on a daily basis. So I'm very sensitive to it, to be fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, and I accept that again, subjective, yep. objective. So subjectively, I, I'm more sensitive to it perhaps than others. But right. I was expecting to to be broadsided with this as I was. It genuinely shocked me because um, I knew the story. I mean, I've seen it, um, but yeah. I just I was I was broadsided by the way this was presented. Um, right. But you know, there there it is. I mean, you know, I I get it. Um, so yeah, I mean, but you know, if you like it, buy it. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. It you no, know, but that's Steve. You're you're right, and I mean that's what art's about, right? It does. It's not. It doesn't all have to make you happy. And I think you're you're right on with your emotions. I, you're right on with your interpretation, and and that's fine. And I, I I I think we share the same interpretation. I just think I love that it it does that. I love that it makes you yeah. angry. It should. It's like if you're just thinking like this is great, I'm like, oh man. It, that's the sociopath. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, well, right. Yeah. That way so, uh, we end up with unhinged. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Paul Hurt in the chat saying, funny, I had the exact, I had exactly this conversation with someone recently, be it how we react to watching Squid Game. And it's like, it's like, this is what, and I think that's what Squid Game is about too. It's, it's about like how we exploit uh, ourselves are, you know, humans. I, you don't yeah. see that. I don't think outside of human beings. So you don't see animals going, you don't see two dogs sitting there laughing at another dog while he chases his own tail. Right. And it's, although dogs do that, but they just don't watch. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, um, John uh, Brock says in the chat, says in the book, I believe the director, Ed Harris's character is much more evil and sinister. You can see how it would cross over mm -hmm. into that. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's where this is leading in my view. Um, right. As I said today, you you went to a studio today. You pitched this to a studio. They're going to be like, well, surely it's a it's a grotesque A twenty four style midsummer horror Vivitch style horror. <laughs> Vivitch. You know, that's what this. Have thing you is. ever have you ever seen uh, John? I think it was John Mulaney's stand up on pitching <laughs> um, Back to the Future. No, I don't think so. No. Oh my God. It's his stand up is like pitching back to When you see that, you'll never be able to watch back to the future the same way again. And he, like, just as an idea, like one of the things he says, he goes, okay, we, we, we make this machine and it, he, he goes through what it's made out of and everything. He goes and and, and, and we go back in time and they're like, Oh, and, and you save Kennedy. No, that, that would be a good idea, but no, no, no. We're going to, Date, he's gonna date his mother. Mom. <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> it's like when you see the pitch, you're like, when no, it's it's hysterical watching him do it. And you're like, how did they make this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so all yeah. right. That one that one triggered much more debate than I thought it would in terms of when I first sat down to watch it, I just thought it was another movie to watch. Um yeah. only as I watched it and to, to my horror. Um, it sort of realized what we were uh, straying into, but, um, but yeah, there we go. Uh, but it's, um, decent. it's decent. Um, we've got, uh, Paul is asking, go on, ask you who he had the conversation with. Do we want to know? You're not going to say Russell Brand, are you, Paul? Don't say Russell Brand. Man. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, oh, I got this. I forgot to show this image. Actually, this is an image from, uh, dual. Look at that. Oh, wow. It's just gorgeous feel the sunlight yeah feel the warmth of the sun I, just, yeah. uh, I wonder I mean, when you put that on the i wonder what that was from i, I didn't twig that was from from jewel yeah, yeah. isn't that beautiful 
I was just yeah, like, yeah. ah, I just happened to see it there when I, was, I hadn't used it. So, um, all right. Uh, we got coming up our last of, yeah. of the evening. Uh, we'll use John's image first here. Uh, I hope, I hope this goes a little bit better than, uh, the last one. <laughs> I'm curious about this to see what you guys make of this. We're very curious. Uh -oh. bit, I've got a bit of trepidation as well, but I'm Go, curious. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Um, well, it's passengers. I don't have the image, but yeah, it's passengers. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, 4K, uh, yeah, 4K UHD, uh, Dolby Atmos. Um, this was a first time watch for me. I think it was for you as well, DJ. You said? Yeah. Oops. Um, Wrong button. <laughs> so watching this with Steve's previous comments in mind, <laughs> uh -oh. I, I was, um, you know, trying to um, decipher what, what he was referring to. Um, mm when he, you oh know, when he talked about it being very disturbing um it yeah so let's talk about the av part of it first i guess um mm. excellent disc mm. oh. <laughs> this is a this is well and this was i think what prompted it is because it was a demo in one of the rooms that, yes, so, yes. Yeah. now yeah. which scene it, did they did they use it was the scene where he had to vent the uh vent the plasma the, or whatever yeah, it yeah, the plasma at okay. you know. So yeah, this is a this is a fantastic disc. Um, yeah. I mean it, that scene especially. I mean it rumbled my it shook my whole house. You know. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of scenes like that, but yeah. yes, it, ha yeah. happy to say my subwoofers stayed in place, so my, <laughs> my, uh, my fix seems to to be holding. Um, but yeah, um, I I think this is a great disc. It. It looks fantastic uh, visually. It's very sharp. Um, it's 4K. You know, you expect it to look good, um, but you know, dark space scenes when when you needed them, and um, and yeah, the audio on this was was fantastic. Um, oh. Yeah, really good. Uh, I'm assuming you feel the same, DJ. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I I, uh, I watch this obviously after seeing that scene um and it's it blew me away the story blew me away the home theater experience blew me away the um the, like you said the base uh there's a scene at one hour and two minutes uh and if you know the story you'll know what i mean but it's like um part of the storyline is exposed and they use the sound to set the ominence of what is going on, of what is being told. And it is, it's just an amazing use of sound to help tell the story. Um, it's, it, it was, that, that scene was awesome. Um, there's a scene where they, they use, uh, they, they, it's space travel. So they slingshot around a star that's at 59 minutes and the sound that they use there and the picture, because you get to see like there's so the picture in this, it was, uh, well, well just to, the 10 minute mark, the hologram room. Right. And it's like, so this is futuristic and they, what he, the character walks into a room and it's like, what? and like you see the entire solar system around them. It's never been done like that, I don't think. In all the Star Wars movies we've seen, it, it just, it, it looks awesome. Um, it, it From beginning to end, I thought this picture, it, I, I was surprised we haven't heard more about this, to be honest with you. Um, this is from what, 2018, 20, I think? Oh, I thought it was a little older. Is it 18? Oh, is it? I don't know. It, it, was, it was lambasted by critics and it died at the box office. <laughs> Which really? is why really? this kind of came and went. This this was a movie that um, Sony were almost embarrassed about. I think they had high hopes oh, really? for it. We've got Pratt and Lawrence, two A-listers, even at right. that time. And I think they they had high hopes for it. And the the critics were so savage that it that they kind of just let it go. I think they they are a bit embarrassed by it, which I think is I wrong. Don't, I don't understand. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, it's I know, a great conversation piece. It is. It's now, a I know what you're fantastic conversation. Obviously, piece. I know what you're referring to, Steve. Um, yeah, and I don't know how much we want to spoil. I'm assuming most people have seen this, although DJ and I hadn't seen it. So, <laughs> um, so I don't want to spoil a whole lot. But, 
but yeah, you know, the Chris Pratt's character, he makes a pretty sketchy decision <laughs> um, about midpoint, well, not even midpoint, about half no. hour or so into the movie. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a rough decision, but you know, I always, I also ask, what would you do well, if you yeah. were put in that situation? Uh, number exactly. one, and what would you do if you were put in that situation and you and you came upon Jennifer Lawrence sleeping in her in her cryo tube? Um, but you know what you know what do you do if you're in that situation, right? Um, two, like you can never use the results to justify the decision. But had he not made the decision that he made, they all die, right? Everybody <laughs> dies. <laughs> And so, yeah, yeah. So the outcome, you know, again, you can't necessarily because he didn't know that at the time, right? So you yeah, can't necessarily, yeah. yeah but I the decision by the results, yeah, but the ends justify the means, right? And <laughs> and you know, you can't you can't go with that. But the facts are, if he doesn't do what he does, they all die, right? <laughs> we could have, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It's like I have, I have a whole other take that would actually be like. There is a, a version, I, I get what you're saying, but there is a version where it's almost like not even wrong because you could say that it goes on every day. Somebody makes a decision in front of you and it affects the rest of your life and you don't have the rest of the life that you wanted doesn't mean that they did something wrong. They made a decision and now it affects your life too. And there, and that's right. what I thought was great about it this. Was very, it was a mm -hmm. very self-serving and selfish decision at the time, right? Correct. It wasn't, it wasn't but, for the betterment yeah, of I, anybody, but, but nope, Chris, right? yeah. nope, and nope. So there's nope. no, but, but the situation again, it's now like we're for dancing people, around it, and everybody now knows exactly what we're talking. Well, about. Well, no, right? because we're we're dancing around it, but there's so much more to talk about, and it's such a great, con and that's what I think is great about this movie, and it's a shame it got lambasted because it's like, what are you doing? That's what these things are supposed to do. That's what the Truman Show is supposed to do. That's what Passenger is supposed to do. It's supposed to inspire conversation, so then people learn like. Oh my God, you're a psycho. You think that's okay. Or, oh my God, oh, I didn't see it from that perspective or whatever. Or look at John, Steve and I with Invisible Man. It's like without these conversations, you're not understanding a new perspective. You're not, you know, not, not you, John, but I mean people. No, I hear you. And it's like, oh, it's supposed to be entertaining. Well, go see a goddamn comedian if it's supposed to be entertaining. You know, it's like, it, it's supposed to, it's supposed to inspire emotion. It's supposed to do something, you know, and that doesn't mean you have to walk out of there going, oh, wow, that was awesome with a big smile on your face. You might be angry when you're done, but guess what? It won. It did its job, <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's what this movie does because you're just like, at, at, it's like you can see all sides of it. You see every character's perception of it and you'd be like, wow. And I could be every sing. I would be every single character, right? right? It's like, I, I mean, it, you know, I mean, and let's go through the characters. <laughs> it's like, no, well, I was going to say, just going back to like the, the moral, the moral dilemma here, like, does he redeem himself by presenting the choice at the end of the movie? Um, because, well, I think well but yeah. see, that's too you know? shallow. I think it's more of, um, or does he just present the choice knowing that? it's not going to be accepted. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, so. what I'm saying is, is like to go a little bit, a little deeper, I'd say when I was 16 years old, I, I probably, it, it, when I was 16 years old and I met, I didn't meet Jen then, but knowing everybody then, I would be like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, whatever. I'm not jumping in front of a truck for her, but now I'd give my life. Right. Right. And we all would. And, and I think that's you can look and these are those conversations that you can have with this movie and say, like, it's the growth. It's this. There was there at one point. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, John, John says, thanks, chat, John. Very deep, yeah, very deep this evening, guys. It kind of dark. Yeah. Though, shadow of breath. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right, did you go on, man? Sorry. It just. It, yeah, no, no, that was good. Um but no, that's what I mean. It's like, I mean, there's so many things here and you also have to, and as much as we've talked about it, 
we're leaving so much detail of this movie out of it that it's not a spoiler because you you have to understand where he was at the time. You have to understand. I mean, literally how it came to be. Literally the what, the 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 events that led up to him doing what he did and what he did almost did before that. And I mean, there's so many things that it's like when you, I think John, if you, if you went back and watched it again, you might be like, Oh, okay. He hadn't done it yet. And you're like, Oh wow. There Me? there's yeah. Oh, I'm not, I'm not upset at all by the, the decision. So I'm not right. But it's like, I don't think it's as, but, no, no, no. I just don't I think, think it's, it's sketchy. A, like, well, well, but here's the thing, like, okay, let's say he succumbed to his loneliness and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Is a year long enough to justify it? Maybe it's 10 years. You can't years. put it. Maybe after 10 years, you can say, okay, I, I, I'm right where you are, right? Like, I, I get your yeah. decision. But a year's not that long. Now, That's subjective, again, A year's though. a long time to be alone, but <laughs> I, I don't know. Right. Like, is it but five Christ. years? Is it 10 years? Is it? You know, yeah, but twelve but months guys, seems like pretty short. <laughs> you know, he's got his own home theater. Exactly, we, I know. <laughs> I, I'd be fine for a year, man. I'm playing basketball. Like I got all this. I got all the cereal that I want. <sighs> you know, I can I can watch all the movies that I want. <laughs> I got a bartender yeah, they, they giving me drinks. Them, you know, pitching this decision to the wrong people, aren't they? With exactly. Us. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're good. I got, I got booze and movies, man. I don't need anything else. <laughs> I'm good for well, the so, next ninety years. Just strap me in. Uh, <laughs> I know you, John. I'm thinking that most of the pods. Are <laughs> I got two hands. <laughs> Push them out. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I just yeah. think. I mean, tell me this, guys. I, did, you, did either of you watch it with your other halves? With the, yes. with your wife. No, I didn't because um, Jen thought it was going to be like a, and I did too. I was like, I asked her and she was like, eh. she read the synopsis and she was like, it's, it's a space movie. Right. And it's like, okay. And I came up and I was like, do you want to go watch it? And she's like, no, I go, it's amazing. I wish you'd watched it with me. Cause we could have the discussion. So I basically just reenacted the whole movie for her. And <laughs> you know, and, and, part and did you wear play? a dress for the Jennifer yeah. Lawrence bits? Uh, uh, yeah, no, that white bathing suit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I looked fabulous. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I was just going to make another comment. I'll save that for Patreon. Yeah, you so, you so uh, right, right. yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, so, and the reason yeah. I ask you, the reason I ask if you did is because. I and again, I, I'm wary of even as I say this, whether other genders and other people, yeah, might split down the line as to whether they think this decision was right or not. And I wonder whether I, this is a question, not a statement, whether yeah. um, uh, people of the same gender of of the person in this who is who is has the choice taken away from them um, would would take a different view and just be like, this guy's an animal um and i i, I mean i don't this is, that's a question i don't know um but i wonder that this is why i, I kind of ask as to whether you know what, what conversations were did you have a conversation with lydia about it john you obviously don't have to say mate if it's not for public no uh, no we i mean we, we she didn't go to, so deep in it i guess you know it was just a movie uh, on the mm. surface and um i i don't think she she took any kind of view on it, to be honest with you. We didn't talk a whole lot about it, but you know, she kind of goes into a lot of these just saying, look, this is a movie that stars. There's two people. I know that we're going to have both of these people heavily involved in this movie. And this is how we get there, you know? So, yeah. um, oh, it, it, it didn't, uh, we didn't go too deep on it. Um, now it's, maybe um, she did feel certain ways and we just didn't discuss it, but she didn't, she didn't say anything about it when we watched it. So, no. It's um, it's it, it, I I think when the, the shot because I, I I tried to rewatch some of this this afternoon and I ran out of time. I, I I actually really liked this movie and I was pleasantly surprised when I first saw it. Actually, on my iPad, each yes. <laughs> um, and you and still remember, enjoyed it. Wait till you see it in your yeah. in Cinema George. Well, quite well. That's it. I was very pl yeah. Plug three. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> uh, tune in in two weeks, guys. If you remember what that's all about. <laughs> that was great. 
Yeah. So, uh, so hey, hey, look, Hollywood now knows the name of Cinema George. I've, I I've reached my zenith. No, um, it's still just our listeners. Yeah, well, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, Brightside Home Theater going hey. out on satellite to all of Hollywood. Say that. <laughs> when the Unhinged 2 takes place in Cinema George, right, then you'll have to eat, your, eat crow. Yeah. <laughs> Unhinged oh. 1 took place in Cinema George. Well, it took place in my real. cinema. Yeah. Yeah. It'll just be me stabbing someone while I'm watching Truman Show. Oh. Um, anyway. <laughs> even, uh, 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 spoilers, even Carl was like, why do you say, like, it's a plug. There's plug. nobody yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's, he's like, he's selling out. tickets to Cinema George. Like, he's like, shameless plug, I got a cinema. Well, that's what we all do. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any, anyway. so funny. Um, <laughs> like, so I, I get your merchandise story. now for yeah, cinema. Yeah, hey, hey, matter of time. Um, <sighs> I'll so, put it up yes. on T Public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? It, so, so yeah. So, the, so I really enjoyed it first time. I was pleasantly surprised, and the reason I watched it on my iPad is because I'd heard it was terrible, and so I thought, well, I'll watch it and see it, you know, if I can do anything to it. And I really enjoyed it, um, and then watched it properly when I got the 4K disc, you know, in Cinema George Plug Four. <laughs> um and uh it was it was you know very very good but what mm-hmm. I, I think my favorite part of it is you talk about the sound when when that when that decision is revealed yep the shot of jennifer lawrence the look on her face mm-hmm. of horror revulsion outright terror and betrayal is 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 acting like like you just can't believe you know they, they talk about cinema show don't tell and just the look on her face when she finds yeah. out, I thought was was just incredible. And for me, the whole movie revolves around that one bit. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I think this film. It, it's a shame it's been maligned. It's a shame it's been overlooked because it is a good home theater experience. It is a good, um, it's a good time to watch it. It's entertaining, but it also has this this discussion that it's funny that decision. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like yeah, some yeah. of his some of Chris Pratt stuff. Like you see. Um... Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Space Lord. What does he call himself there? Star Lord. Star Lord. Star Lord. Yeah, Star Lord yeah. and the dance off. Uh, you got that stuff going on there. Nice. Uh, they, yeah. I, I, I thought um, that one particular scene that was a scene like the Cedia demo. I thought that was similar to the nod from uh, from like him and Hemsworth had the joke of like remember in uh, Endgame. And Infinity War, and they were like, "Oh, when they first met in Infinity War, and he was like imitating him, and he's doing his accent and stuff." Chris Pratt was, but then later in that movie, he does the thing with the, you know, Chris Pratt Thor has to hold the thing open, and I was like, "Are they?" T-? I, I couldn't remember which came first or if they knew, but I think that came first. So maybe this was maybe the End Game or Infinity was was the nod to this. I don't know, but I saw a lot of similarities watching it. Um, but it is, it's an awesome home theater experience. And like, like you said, Steve, that, that scene with Jennifer Lawrence and that, mm-hmm. that's the one Oh two. That's what I was saying. And the sound of yeah, that yeah. is just awesome. Um, at one hour and 40 minutes, there's, uh, it's called override now I called it. And it's like the music that they use, it sounds like it's from Iron Man. It's like, it's got the same tones to it. It's like when you, you'll know if you jump to that, you'll see what I mean. And then that one hour, 18 minutes and 50 seconds, uh, there's a, you know, some gravity loss on the ship and the, the base is amazing. But then the CGI that they did with Jennifer Lawrence's character and how everybody and everything was just, it, it looked awesome. I, I can't get over how good this picture was, the space shots, um, everything about it. It's just yeah. uh, it, it's, it, it's uh, another four one. Four words, four words to each. It's a Sony disc. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it, I mean you, you almost get to the point where that's all you've got to say about Sony releases. Yeah. You know, they, they just, they, just yeah. they, they're, they're absolutely incredible. But it, yeah, they spent a lot of money on this as well. This was a, and you could tell that from the CG and from yeah, the, the big you know, budget the, movie. The two A-list stars. They spent a lot of money on it. Um, yeah. And yet, um, you know, it, as I said, I, um, unfairly maligned, I would say. Um, I think they, they sold it as a bit of a romantic comedy. I think that, you know, I think that's kind of where they, they may have marketed it wrong. You know, that people just thought, oh, it's a knockabout comedy. And it's yeah. not. <laughs> um, you know, people get challenged 
um, very quickly, I think, in this film. But it's also got yeah. a bit of Wally to it about how, you know, his his involvement then starts to cause every little thing to start to break down. Um, right. So Wally had that as well. Um, yeah. There's a little bit of that I spotted in it, but yeah. No, it's, yeah, but that wasn't, was that not, wasn't him. That no. wasn't him. It was. No, no, that, yeah, yeah. Just the, the, uh, the ship starting to have its problems. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's how. Yeah. yeah, it opens with that, and it's. But uh, yeah, really, really, uh, an awesome movie. I was very, very surprised at how good it was, mm. uh, both home theater and story wise. And uh, yeah, I, I think we, uh, I think we uh, expressed our opinions, our, our, our subjective <laughs> opinions. Yeah. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, one more thing quickly before we get going. I know Steve, we got to get you to Betty by there, buddy. Uh, why isn't this opening? Come on, come on, come on. There it is. So we are this, this month, we are donating 50% of our, uh, it's actually more than that. Cause my wife and I are giving too, but, uh, eat, drink and give generously more pig, less cancer. Uh, this, there's a, this is for, and I put it in the notes here. Let me click on it so I can remember exactly what it's for. It's for uh, a donation to go to uh, St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. So, um, yeah, uh, that's my brother's playing at this. Uh, there's a whole, I'm going to kind of throw my wife under the bus here. So I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm like, there, there's so many different raffles. Okay. So you go there and you put your money down and get your tickets and stuff. Cause they're trying to raise more money. Um, there was this one young little girl that is a friend of, uh, my wife's daughter. Uh, they're the ones putting it on. They happen to be using my brother's band to play. Um, who's John, John has seen my brother play. Uh, but my brother texts me, this is a couple months ago. He's like, Oh, I'm playing this. And we're like, yeah, we know. And, okay. So, you know, it just kind of, intersection there but uh but yeah they're they're looking at all these things that you can raffle off and one of them's the 50 it's a 50 50 raffle so um there's there's an autographed uh lyrics from uh eddie vetter there's uh there's a whole bunch of stuff tons of like really valuable stuff that they're raffling off and um my wife's like you don't want to just get like look at all these cool things i go no you i'm Plunking two hundred dollars down on fifty fifty, you get what you want. She goes, but you could get all these cool things, and I go, no, you do the fifty fifty. If you win, you give it all back. And she goes, no, look at what you could win. I go, I think you're forgetting what we're doing. We're supposed to be helping people. <laughs> like, we're not going shopping. <laughs> like, what are we doing? <laughs> she goes, but you could win. I go, I know. I didn't say you couldn't do it, but that's what I'm doing with our money. So. Um, but yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing St. Jude's hospital for this month. So we are, we, we haven't missed a month. Uh, we haven't talked about it every week like we used to, but we are still donating every month. So, um, did you miss, you did miss one of my, um, my experiences. We've skipped one and this is important because this will, Oh, I am so sorry. I just suddenly remembered. Don't worry. I've already just remembered. I didn't even put it in the show notes and it's, it's, uh, kind of your fault. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the poster behind me. Mm. Um, you wish. Um, actually, <laughs> a lot knows. of listeners wish. Yeah. I yeah. am so sorry. I forgot that. I but I, like I said, it wasn't in the show. Now I've got to add it. But okay, yeah. Elemental, go. Yeah, so, so yeah, good news, guys. <laughs> this is a film with the word element in that I like. <laughs> well, that's good news. So <laughs> that's where you were going. All happy, happy, happy. Um, so yes, so this is yeah, Elemental just came out this week on Disney Plus. Uh, came out Friday, Thursday, Friday, something like that last week. Um, I skipped it in cinemas. Um, it was famously a, a bomb on its first week, and then it got it grew legs and has made um, plenty of money. So Pixar still have not had a bomb. Um, and it's a um, really, really nice movie. Nice, safe, fun movie with a bit of science thrown in. And it's about a group of uh, a world in which you have fire people, water people, air people, and wood people, like elements. Um, and they all I see what they did city. there. There you go. <laughs> and they all live together in this city. And our heroes are fire people. And the daughter of this particular family um, develops a, a, a bond with someone from water. And what happens when water meets fire? Steam. Um, 
and it, it gets steamy. Not like that because it's a cartoon. <laughs> um, so, um, and it's really, really fun. And I watched this with a member of the target audience um, and, uh, and and someone else on Sunday, no, Saturday afternoon, pouring down with rain here into Cinema George, plug five. <laughs> and um, and uh, we, we watched the whole thing at, at, at a decent level. It's in Atmos, 4K HDR, um, and it looks absolutely amazing. <clears throat> um, it's three dimensional from minute one, so it starts with a with a shot over this city, and it, it's like you could reach in and touch it, um, and all the different. I mean, you can see it actually quite well from that picture. I mean, that's just a, a poster, but you can see kind of the 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 detail in the flames and the flickering of the flames, and all the different color variations, and then the 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 water people have got bubbles moving inside them, and when they sweat, the the water obviously runs down, um, and it just looks phenomenal. Um, so it looks great. The Atmos is not bad at all either. Bearing in mind it's a Disney stream um, where you have a um, – uh, the daughter is prone to losing her temper. And when she loses her temper, she goes – she turns purple. And you then get a uh, sort of an explosion. Um, and you feel that there's a bass thud when she does it. And it was like, oh, okay, that was quite nice. You know, that happens a few times in the film. Um, so it's actually really decent. Um, and so if you like animated movies and you've got Disney Plus, um, I don't think it's out on disc anytime soon. Um, I recommend this. It's really fun and a good way to spend, you know, a couple of hours uh, on a on a wet Saturday afternoon. So, yeah, really, really good yeah. um, and way better than The Fifth Element, obviously. <laughs> so there we go. Well, not obviously. It's that's well, subjective. The, 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 sorry, I, I, I should let me correct that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot better than the Bruce Willis Fifth Element. It's not as cool as the Bright Side Fifth Element. Obviously, that's way better. There you go. Uh, right. So, yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, no, it's good. I, I recommend yeah. this, guys. I think you'll enjoy this. You get a kick out of this. It is out on Kaleidoscape. Um, oh, okay. In, in the 4K HDR, so it should be out soon. Well, it will be coming yeah. soon on disc. Oh yeah, it'll it'll, it'll um, hit disc. It's just when. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's good. Yeah, recommend it. That so you say that about like kids' movies and stuff like that. There's uh, features I'm looking for my new remote system and for uh, tweaks of the week where we're going to be having grandchildren and stuff in the theater. And there's remotes that you can. Kaleidoscape already does it with a single remote, but other companies are doing it where you put a smaller remote, and as soon as that remote's used, it triggers every every component to be all, you know, kid friendly, you set the level. So it's just like everything they watch would be just that. And I'm like, man, that would be cool. It's like, I'm hoping it's like a control four has it, something like that, which I'm planning on trying like something like that. That's one of the things I'll be looking for, but that would be really cool so that you can just send, you know, here's the remote and just, you guys can do whatever you want and you don't have to worry about them, uh, you know, pulling up God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a you're a you more know. trusting man than me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm watching like a hawk. If anyone is uh, under the uh, under the age of of about ninety, um, <laughs> then I'm sort of staring at them the whole time. <laughs> In the room, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh yes. I had some uh, some friends come around uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they've got a six year old and a uh, three year old, and hmm. they'd never been to a cinema before. Six years old. Wow. I know. So she comes in, and because they're like, you know, they'd heard tale of the cinema room, um, and um, so they they come in, and the, the six year old give them a in. copy of the article. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> I, I uh, here you go. Before America. you go in, here you go. Yeah, here's yeah, your free copy. Yeah, here's like, here's thank you for yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. Yes, was the line long outside? Was it you know? Did yeah, you, yeah, can yeah, I get yeah, you a yeah. drink? Or something? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. So she comes in, and she dived over the the back sofa dived over that onto the front sofa. Now, the look on my face must have been enough <laughs> for them to basically grab her and drag oh. her from the room. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I didn't know quite what to say. But let's yeah. just say that um, I don't think she'll be coming back in anytime soon. She'll be back 26 the next time. She oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was. Uh, but like I said, so you're very trusting, Deej. 
Well, <laughs> it'll be my grandchildren and there will be a lock on the door. So, but yeah, if I want to. Sentry it, guns. I'm not saying like the first time I meet a child, I hand them a small remote and go knock yourself out, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there, w- there will be an educational process in the uh, it, it, beforehand. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny when people go in and the kids, I've had little kids want to go up and touch the screen and stuff. And the parents yes. like, oh, they're not going to hurt it. They're not going to do anything. I'm like. Um, if they scratch that or damage it, uh, are you willing to replace it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can replace that. No problem. Okay. Uh, I'll show you the bill. It's 3,500 bucks. Yeah. No, for just the Come screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, let's go. Why don't you have a lock on the door? Cause I know how to treat the screen. <laughs> it's like your kid doesn't live here. If it did, they would know. So. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's something, as I said, I watch like a hawk. Yeah. Um, I can't, it, you know, not easy to relax when it's, when it's people that I know, obviously they're used right. to it. Great to relax. Yeah. But otherwise, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. When they Warden, first meet, when they first come in, you're like stand against it. It's like, cause that, to me, that's the one, the most vulnerable. Everything else is either the projectors high up or the screen, but the screen is the one they all want to little kids love to go up and hit and touch and feel the velvet. <laughs> yeah. Shoot silly yeah. string at. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's all fun. Never more anxious oh, <laughs> than when something yeah. like that happens. But then yeah. that's that's enough of me being crotchety. All right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I don't think so. I'm sure you'll text me in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. At the moment, I'm barely sleeping, so I probably will. <laughs> uh, no kidding. There you go. Well, I'm up. All right. that's Guys, we, we're coming in under. I know. Barely. I thought we were going to come in way under, but we we decided to chat and discuss and and uh, debate. Uh, it's it's all subjective. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, anything else, guys? Uh, it's no. Nope. You know. So, other than again to publicly oh. thank John for the awesomeness of the Bear season two. Yeah. Which, I uh, mean, I didn't I didn't write it, it or make yeah. it, but you're welcome. <laughs> hey, I started it too. Yeah, that's what I'm going to watch now. Yeah, my wife and I are watching it um, as we eat. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's great. it is. It's 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 not as tense as I thought it would be. Like the way you said it was like really tense, but it, it, it can get. Just, yeah, I don't know I'm, where you yeah, want it. It is, yeah, yeah. but it's like uh, you know we're a few few seasons, few episodes in, and we have friends that own uh, you know own a restaurant, and they're going through hell right now themselves. Um, but I grew up in the restaurant life and or around it, I should say. Right. And I'm like, no, oh, this is about right. It's like, I've seen Eddie act that way. I've seen Eddie act like, uh, well, the bear. Right. And he's, you know, it's it, like, you gotta be that way. And it's, I, I see what all the characters are doing. I, I mean, it is, it's really, uh, it's one of those things where I think they didn't sell themselves correctly. I don't know. Well, it's just, well if John hadn't, John hadn't mentioned it, yeah. I would not have, have even given it a try. And yet, yeah. I, I I tweeted out earlier, you know, that, that when and John said season two is better, and you're 100 percent right, John, 100 million percent right. I I think season two, the last couple of episodes, I think it's episode five and six, yeah. are some of the best written, acted, and performed TV since Breaking Bad or The Wire. Well, I mean, and some of the is, character um, arcs too, especially yeah. like Richie oh, well, and me. like Richie's yeah, well, arc quite, was fantastic. You know, you know, there, there, you know, there, there, there are episodes here that that that. that, that are as tense as any feature film um, and also, yeah. you know, deliver as much dialogue as some feature films, I think, as well. Um, yeah. it, it's exceptionally good um, and and very stressful deed. So when you do get to these, there are ones where the whole thing is just passive-aggressive heaven. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> um, love that. Yeah, yeah it's just, yeah. just like, oh, my God. Um, and anyone with a large family, I suspect, will recognize <laughs> some of season some, two. Yeah. Um, yeah, will be just like, Oh, yeah, that's on Brenda. Yep, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's Uncle Ben. Yeah. Oh God, that. Yeah, that, wow. that's that's um, you know. John, Steve's Steve's coming up with those names too quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think yeah. they're real people. <laughs> yeah. Aunt Brenda. It's like, Aunt Brenda doesn't yeah. live in, listen to Brightside Home Theater, so she's getting thrown yeah. under the bus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, next week's Takeover Tuesday will be a uh, listener comment. So if you want to get a few in before I record, I'll probably be recording that this weekend at some point. Uh, you can get a few comments and email me at uh, brightsidehometheater at gmail.com. Seems to be where everybody's going for that. Um, other than that, uh, thank you to everybody, uh, all the support, 
uh, everything, helping us grow. Uh, Patreon supporters, thank you. Um, we'll, you know, check us out over there. If you're not already a Patreon supporter, we're, we're doing a little extra things there. I mean, this is the bulk of us. This is us. Uh, and it is the community. Um, but for people that, you know, are helping support us financially, you know, I'm trying to do a little bit extra and it, and it, taken off it's that it's i'm having fun with it so hopefully i can get you guys in it john you're already a supporter yeah. uh but steve we can get you in maybe sometime we'll do it i'll send you the link and we can, you can join us too when we do the zoom um but uh yeah and it, it, guys if you guys I'll, I'll say this here if you guys want to do a little video message to patreon i can just put those up there too just like i don't know if you've, you've seen the couple i've done but if you just want to do some high ones or whatever I can Someone in a those. white uh, white swimsuit DJ, is that what we're doing? Is that yes. what you think? Uh, okay, don't don't spoil it. You gotta go there to see it. You don't wanna spoil it. It's like, jeez. <laughs> so um Get the milk away for free, Steve. I know. <laughs> God, yeah. That's that. said, exactly. Yeah. You got I mean, you got the I mean, there's a lot to that video, Steve, the coming and the going. You know, it's like <laughs> oh well. <laughs> 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 I don't know. We got to go. Uh, what do we got to do? Go push play. What he said. Hey, Fred. This has been a Hey, Fred production with theme music by Jeff Bernhardt and Throne Vault Productions.